dementia or other brain issues down the road. So I think that this is a fascinating science that we are uh, able to uh, learn about and is going on in our midst right here in, in Sarasota. So I think that's, uh, that's fascinating. So uh, now, Patrick, I'm wondering if I have the next program set up correctly. And I don't believe I do, but I think I can do it. I think I can do it because um, I think I can do it. The cheesecake is doing its work on my brain. <laughs> it was predicted. Should be of no surprise. Patrick, we have a whole different issue here. Oh, there we go. That's great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Nikki Kobritz. And Nikki is president of the Center for Brain Health. She's also the founder and president of Youthful Aging Home Health. She is a geriatric specialist and nurse practitioner has more than three decades of experience in developing and managing high-quality health care services. In the state of Maine, Nikki founded the Expanded Child Health Services, a rural pediatric clinic selected by the Academy of Pediatrics as a national model. She then developed a state model for hospital-based child neglect programs for the Maine Medical Association, and she also served in Maine Governor John R. McKernan's cabinet. In 2011, she formed a partnership with the internationally known Roskamp Institute to create and operate SciBrain, a research-driven organization dedicated to reducing people's risk for Alzheimer's disease. In 2016, she established the new entity, Center for Brain Health, to expand its capabilities. Our next speaker's passion is to bridge the gap between science, research, and what the community needs to know. And that's why she's here today. Please join me in welcoming Nikki Cobridge. Thank you, John. Um, I'm delighted to be here, and I want to personally thank the Downtown Condo Association and the sponsors for organizing this very important community event. Cheryl Grady and I were commenting earlier that three or four years ago, we were not holding educational forums like this, talking about brain health. Because the prevailing thinking had been, if you have an issue with memory, then you need to get your fares in order and make your reservation at the nearest memory unit. Now today, we know so much more about how to improve brain health. Lifestyle interventions have become more and more important. And in fact, some neurologists and researchers will tell you more important than Aricept and Amenda and the other medications. Yes, they're good, but we also need to pay more attention to lifestyle interventions. And that's what this forum is all about. The, um, let me just quickly um, ask you a question. Exercise. Diet, very, very important. We're going to talk a lot about that. I want to know, for example, how many of you exercise at least a half hour a day, three, four times a week? Oh, right. This is great. I'm very excited about that. How many of you understand the principles of Mediterranean diet and follow them occasionally? More than I'm very impressed because I'll tell you, getting people motivated to make changes in lifestyle is hugely important and very, very difficult. It is a major challenge, and that's something that we deal with all the time. Scientists and researchers are working around the clock to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease, and they know a whole lot about how to improve, slow down, and stabilize cognitive impairment. When these findings, however, don't give researchers a direct path to a cure for Alzheimer's disease, then that information is shared among the research community, but not with the public at large so much. So we often will get a condensed version of a significant finding which will hit the media airways for about a 24 to 48 hour news cycle. And the average consumer is left wondering, gosh, you know, what does this mean for me? 
how do I assimilate this information into my life so that I can benefit from these findings? This is the reason that Dr. Mullen and I, then CEO of Ross Camp Institute, formed the partnership SciBrain. We did this for two reasons. Number one is because we wanted to bridge this gap of information between the research community and the public. It was really important for us to take this validated science and research because there's so much crap out there. Um, and we wanted to take validated science and research and translate this information into practical applications for individuals to be able to take control of their brain health. Now, we as professionals and paraprofessionals all have our own approach to, to brain health, but we all have the same goals. Now, I can get my slides to work. Time for a little work. <laughs> our goal, our focus, is to reduce the impact of modifiable medical risk factors associated with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, and to improve cognitive functioning by increasing protective factors that are associated with lifestyle interventions. Wow, now that's a mouthful, I understand. But it's really, in, the message that I'm getting across here is that we do have a path to be able to improve our brain health and our cognitive functioning. Now, the foundation of our approach, of our program, our basics include exercise, Mediterranean diet, and mental stimulation. And we use this therapy <laughs> as protective factors, and yes, there are many more protective factors, but we use these basic um, protective factors to reduce the impact of modifiable medical risk factors known to compromise the integrity of the brain and are associated with the risk for Alzheimer's disease. So we're gonna talk briefly about, I'm all, I'm, these are a list of the modifiable risk factors, and they've already been discussed, so I'm not going to focus on this. The point I want to make as we get into my, my presentation is that this becomes very important, because lifestyle interventions do offset the impact of these medical conditions, and this helps to uh, improve brain health significantly. So there, there's, there's more of a connection here than just exercising the Mediterranean diet. The um, NIH in 2011 published a comprehensive systematic review of evidence relating to risk factors uh, that are associated with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And the nine factors that they came up with are on the list, and Dr. Grindel went over a lot of those. Cheryl Brandy also talked about them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read them. Level two are also conditions that we focus on at Center for Brain Health. And uh, the research is, is, is not as strong as the original nine, but they certainly have an impact on brain health, and, and we, do, uh, we do focus on them. So why lifestyle intervention? Again, I keep stressing the importance of, of lifestyle interventions and their impact and motivating people to make these changes. It used to be if I tell people, you got exercise and eat the right food and do your mental stimulation and be good to your mother and I've lost them. I mean, you're bored, They're, they have no interest. But as we educate individuals, which is a reason why we're here today, and people become, begin to understand the physiology behind why this works and how it impacts on your brain and your physical health, then we get a much different response. We get more interest. And as people progress in the program and they begin to see positive results, then that becomes more motivating. So, the basic physiology behind lifestyle interventions for us what contributes is reducing systemic inflammation because we know that systemic inflammation is linked to beta amyloid as well, and which beta amyloid production, <coughs> which is indicated in obviously Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, 
Increased cardiovascular circulation. We know the brain is highly, highly vascular, so this becomes very important. Increasing the production of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters help to strengthen connections between neurons. We're able to remember information, uh, store information, recall information, when our neurons are speaking to each other. Neurotransmitters help to strengthen that connection. So let's see how these three areas apply to exercise, Mediterranean diet, and mental stimulation. And keeping in mind, I'm just giving you a few highlights. Researchers can write books, and they do write lots of papers talking about more of an impact that exercise, Mediterranean diet, and mental stimulation have, because there's a lot more research coming out all the time. So if we look at exercise, we know that it can significantly reduce the, the levels of tau in cerebral spinal fluid, and the tau protein is associated with beta amyloid, and of course, um, Alzheimer's disease, um, one of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. Increasing blood flow in memory and processing centers of the brain correspond with improvements in cognitive function. Also, Exercise improves the cognitive function among individuals with vascular dementia. And remember, vascular dementia is the number one risk factor that we can prevent. We can prevent vascular dementia. Now let's look at inflammation and how exercise plays into inflammation. We know that it increases the systemic levels of anti-inflammatory processes, properties. Inflammation also may be involved in atherosclerosis and diabetes and the pathogenesis of several chronic pathological conditions, all placing one at risk for cognitive decline. With exercise, oh, I'm sorry, we're off my slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, neurotransmitters. Um, Brain-derived nootropic factor is very, very important to the growth of new neurons. It's called neurogenesis in the hippocampus, and we've learned about the hippocampus today as being the memory center of the brain. So that's probably one of the major impact, impacts of exercise on brain health. <clears throat> Mediterranean diet. When it comes to the Mediterranean diet, the research is indisputable in terms of its positive impact on brain health and, um, and also on general health and, and gen physical health and, and brain health. When we take a look at the Mediterranean diet, and let me tell you that this information does not do it justice. There is so much information out there on Mediterranean diet and its positive impact on brain health. But looking at cardiovascular circulation, Mediterranean diet decreases um, cerebral white matter that's associated with cognitive impairment, and um, Cheryl mentioned that, talked a little bit about that in her speech. The decrease in mild cognitive impairment and, and, the, and its conversion to Alzheimer's disease to respond to, response to the adherence to the Mediterranean diet has been reported. So it's important that we look at how Mediterranean diet, again, can impact the importance of brain health and looking at um, the uh, anti-inflammatory properties as well. Three minutes left. Okay. Um, neurotransmitters, neurochemicals, um, Mediterranean diet is very big in terms of production of neurochemicals. Let me just move ahead. This time is, I have three minutes left. Okay. <laughs> Exercise and, um, and diet. Let me just show you that this slide, why, what we're seeing here is an example of Mediterranean diet and exercise. They took an average population of people 65 plus and they standardized it to 100. And this is what they found. That if you have a, if you have low activity and a high diet, low activity and low diet, then you're 100% risk for Alzheimer's disease. If you have low activity and high diet, Mediterranean diet, then you drop that risk to 70%. 
high activity and low diet, you drop it to 60%, and high activity and high diet reduces that risk to 50%. Now, if someone told 